done so yet, please pause the video and read the question. Why don't we go ahead and try to draw a picture based on the given information. So we've drawn a line that passes through the point 3 comma 5 and encloses a triangular region off here in the first quadrant. We can even color in the area of the triangle just to make it clearer. Now we know the general equation of a straight line looks like the following. This happens to be the point slope form for the equation of a line. We can see from the picture and from the description that the line passes through the point 3 comma 5. So essentially we know one point on the line as x1 comma y1. So that means we can plug 3 in for x1 and 5 in for y1 into the equation of the line. Next, we will mark off the x and y intercepts of the line. The x intercept would be located right here, of course, and then the y intercept is located over here. The reason that those two intercepts are important is as follows. We can see that the area enclosed, as mentioned, is a triangle. And in order to calculate the area of the triangle, what we need is the length of this base as well as the height of the triangle. We'll just call it h for now. Now, of course, we don't know the actual length of the base, nor do we know the length of the height, so we can use some variables to represent them. This distance would be most appropriately labeled x, since it's a horizontal distance along the x-axis. This distance here is appropriate labeled as a y, because it's a vertical distance along the y-axis. Now, it turns out that we can come up with expressions for this distance and also for this distance here. So far we've just called them x and y, but we're going to be able to do a little bit better than that. And to understand that, note that the x-intercept here could be labeled x comma 0. And then similarly the y-intercept could be labeled 0 comma y. So what we can do is work with those intercepts. For example, we can take the x-intercept and we can plug 0 in for the y-coordinate, and x, of course, in for the x-coordinate. We can simplify the left side by subtracting 0 by 5. We can then divide both sides by m, and then finally add 3 to both sides. So we can see that the value of x can be represented as negative 5 over m plus 3. So let's replace this x with that expression. It turns out that we can do something very similar with the y-intercept. We're going to take the value of 0 and plug it in to x of our equation, and then plug y, of course, in for y. So let's show that work here. We'll subtract the 0 and the 3, and then add 5 to both sides. And we can see that the y-distance of our triangle can be represented as negative 3m plus 5. So let's label that on our diagram. Now, you'll notice what we've accomplished is that we've been able to express the horizontal distance or the base of the triangle in terms of m, as well as the height of the triangle, also in terms of m. So we have them expressed in terms of the same variable. Now consider we're trying to calculate the least area, so that means we're going to need an area formula. Well, again, this is a triangle, so all we have to use is the area of the triangle formula, which of course is 1 half base times height, so let's write that out. From the work that we've done thus far on the diagram, we see that the base has been labeled as negative 5 over m plus 3, and the height is negative 3m plus 5. So let's make those substitutions into our formula. Probably a good idea to foil the two terms that are in parentheses. And then we can distribute the 1 half to each of the three terms in the parentheses. Now we have a simplified equation for the area of the region enclosed in the first quadrant. And our next step to optimize, or more specifically minimize, this area is to calculate the derivative. So that's our next move. Perhaps before calculating the derivative, we can move this m to the power of 1 to the numerator. And when we do that, of course, it becomes m to the minus 1. Now we can go ahead and use simple power rules to calculate the derivative of the area. So this will become a prime. The derivative of the constant 15 will become 0. When we pull this negative 1 down in front, we end up with a plus 25 over 2 m, and then we subtract 1 from this exponent to give us negative 2, and then of course the derivative of minus 9 halves m will just be a minus 9 halves. We then set the derivative equal to 0 and try to solve for m. Let's add the 9 halves over to the other side. We can multiply both sides of the equation then by 2, so the 2's cancel. 
Another little trick here is to multiply both sides by m squared. And the reason that's convenient is the m squared multiplied by the m to the minus 2 will essentially cancel out. And then finishing off solving for this, we should acquire plus or minus 5 thirds. Remember, m is the slope of the line, and if you look at the diagram, you can see that the line slopes downward. And of course, a line that slopes downward is actually a negatively sloped line. So we can reject the positive 5 thirds as one of our numbers, leaving us only with negative 5 thirds as our single so-called critical number. We need to evaluate this critical number to make sure that it indeed minimizes the area. And to do that, we can use either the first or the second derivative test. I think in this case, maybe the second derivative test would be nice and easy. So we'll go back to the first derivative, look at it to calculate the second derivative. And so the second derivative is just going to follow power rules. Again, we multiply the negative 2 by 25 halves. And we get negative 25m. And then we subtract 1 to get m to the minus 3. The derivative of this constant is 0. Now, if we evaluate the second derivative at negative 5 thirds, we would see that it turns out to be a positive result. You could, I guess you could use a calculator there to confirm that for yourself. A positive second derivative means that the function, in this case the area function, is concave up. And that should tell us that indeed, at this particular value of m equals negative 5 thirds, we indeed have a minimum value for the area. So just to reiterate that, for the second derivative test, if the second derivative turns out to be positive, that basically confirms that at your critical number, you have a minimum value. So we now know for sure that this value of m minimizes the area, and we can write the final equation of the line. Recall from earlier that we started out with this equation of the line, all we need to do is plug in our calculated value of m. And we are left with the correct answer. As always, thanks for tuning in to watch this video. If you like what you saw, please subscribe so that you can stay tuned for additional solutions to popular textbook questions.